I'm Paula Andrea Pyle, and welcome to Mode of Cosmic Therapy. I am delighted to be back with you today, and I see that it is a beautiful day, Bridget, on Mode of Cosmic Therapy. And for those of you who have not joined us, we welcome you. Like I said, I'm Paula Andrea Pyle, and this is Bridget Nicole Pyle. Hi. And how are you feeling this July the 2nd, 2009? I'm feeling good. Are you? Mm -hmm. But I understand you had a headache this morning. Yeah, I was sick this morning. With a migraine? That's not a pleasant thing at yeah. all. So, but you are feeling better? Yeah, I'm feeling a little better. Because your energy seems to be somewhat subdued today. Yeah. And for those of you who have been watching, you know that Bridget is our artistic bubbly Pisces, born on the 6th, who has a gorgeous singing voice. And she's just a little bit subdued today. We'll see if I'm any less energetic. Um, my number one cameraman told me not to move around so much. Let's see if I can do that or not. Hello, Jacob. And Brandy, number two camera, how are you today? And I welcome Mitzi back on the audio and of course, um, wonderful, wonderful Sandy. She's running the things in the control room. Well, Bridget, we've got a brand new day for another hour in mode of cosmic therapy. Wonder what we're gonna do today. I don't know. What do you feel like? Um. I don't know. It's up to you. Well, I'm going to take it a little bit easier. Do you believe that? No. Okay. I'm going to try to be still, Jacob. You see? You see me being still? Um, I probably won't stay this long away for five minutes. But anyway, for, right, for the duration, I am still. But for those of you who is, it is the first time for you joining us, what we do here at Mode of Cosmic Therapy we don't know. We don't have a clue. When Bridget says she doesn't know, she doesn't know because I don't know. And you're going to see it when we see it. What we do, we take the premise of this hour and let everything happen as it does. Because in life, that's how it happens. Everything formulates this beautiful picture that you paint each and every hour, but it is not contrived and it is not premeditated or pre-planned. And so what we do, we take various different arts and sciences, including astrology and numerology, the Yi Jing, the tarot cards, um, what the else? Can. Oh yeah, the can. That's a very important thing. Thank you, Bridget. What we usually do, we start off, there's this can that we have, and there's about 500 um, pieces of paper in here. And what Bridget does usually, is she'll reach in here and pull out a paper and then we'll build the show's theme around whatever it is that she pulls out. So let's get started on. Look at this ring! Have you ever seen such a pretty ring? I mean, doesn't it just exemplify her? When she came home from the mall the other day, I wanted to take it, but she said, Paula, I don't even think it will get on your pinky, which it didn't. But anyway, it is so pretty. I just love this ring. It looks like her. Okay. okay. Uh-oh, Jacob, I moved. <laughs> yeah. Why are you taking things so personally? Do you really think you are that important in the scheme of things? Wow. We're going to have a serious show today, aren't we, honey? So, tell me again. i got to hear it again. Um, why, do you, why are you taking things so personally? Do you really think you are that important in the scheme of things? All right. So we've got some people out there on July the 2nd, 2009. We're going to have to do the vibration numerology. That's what we're going to be employing in just a moment. But there are some people, most especially cancers, because this is the cancer month. I'm cancer as well. Um, and as I tell everybody, I'm 29.53 degrees cancer. That's as full blown as you can be, but I got a 99 planets in Leo. Um, not that anybody would recognize that. But um, cancer people usually do take things very personally. And it takes them a long time to grow up, a long time to move away from that um, secure, inferior base that they surround themselves with. But anyway, 7 2, I'm doing numerology now, honey. Look at what we're going to get. We're going to get the vibration of 20 today. All right? So we're going to be working 
let's let, make sure July is the seventh month, the second, and then 2009. And what I have done in the principles of numerology, you take and you reduce all the numbers down to a single digit, unless you end up with a master number, which is 11, 22, or 33, but that's another show altogether. But anyway, we've got seven to 11. When you add them together, you get 20. So the vibration of today is 20, and that has to do, of course, with relationships. And so hmm, this hour is going to be dealing with relationships. And also, you know, last week we did a show, and it was about getting out of the past and, and being where your feet are and everything. But 20 has to do with the past. and it has, But you know what it really has to do with, honey? Hmm. I'm going to change that just because I can. Okay? I'm going to change it right here on this spot. I'm going to change it. And this goes for everybody born on the 20th. But um, it's, a very, it's a significant number because zero is everything, encompasses everything. Mm -hmm. And the two, you got a one in here somewhere. Between zero and two, you got a one. But it got gobbled up in the relationships. Right. So what we're going to do is talk about coming alive, being yourself, and being able to retain yourself in a relationship, all right? Instead of duplicating the other, be yourself and that person be himself or herself and come together and bring to the table everything you've got. Because if you don't, if you're going to try to emulate me and copy me and please me and accommodate me, first of all, you're going to make me sick. And second of all, I'm going to resent you very quickly, because I don't need two Paulas any more than you need two Bridgets. And what makes a wonderful, enthusiastic, vibrating, sexual, sensual, artistic, ever flowing, ever flowing, ever flowing, ever flowing, ever, ever growing union is the binding force. Now, according to nuclear physics, you want me to get serious? Okay, this is very simplified for all of you nuclear scientists out there, because I certainly am not. But in nuclear f physics, in order for a star to form, you have to have these two opposing energies. And they got to be vibrating so hard and so fast and so powerful, okay? And when they come together, they've got to be vibrating. I can't do my hands that fast. But they got to be vibrating to overcome the repulsion, you see? Because it's going to push them apart. You see, so they got to vibrate, but they've got to be themselves. They've got to be, if any bit of this bled into that, see, it would destroy them. They couldn't get together. Yeah. But if they vibrate, 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 they fuse together. Mm -hmm. And they're one. But they're still, it, it forms a third thing. That's the relationship, you know, the third element. But they're still maintained themselves, okay? They cannot possibly be I cannot copy you, and you can't copy me, right. you know. And you don't want anybody copying you, and I don't want anybody copying me. So what are we talking about? We're talking about being yourself, <laughs> bringing to the table what you are, and that most especially. I know I deal with this all the time, honey, but I have to emphasize it, because people don't understand, nor do they appreciate that sexuality is the highest form of spirituality available to mankind. And people usually stop at the first rung of the ladder, which is intercourse. And there's nothing in the world wrong with intercourse because we are pleasure-seeking creatures. I mean, that's we're on the earth and we're, we derive our existence through and because of and in pleasure. But there's many more things that will come with and in conjunction with that energy, being art, music, drama, whatever else you want, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so let's see how... The number 20, hey, Bridget, in fact, let's just center it around, darling. Let's see if you can find 20. That would be um, in the major arcana. And this is the tarot cards for those of you who don't know. Just pictures on paper. Pictures on paper, beautiful pictures, huh? That's the wish. Did you have a wish? Mm -mm. You don't have a wish today? Jacob, you got a wish? Randy, the wish card fell out. Somebody's got a wish out there. See, if we had phone lines open, you could call in and tell me what your wish would be. And then we'd talk about it. But anyway, let's try to find 
let's look for it. We're looking for the number 20, and that would be that man and woman in that boat. Oh, you don't know these cards. Ah! You found it. You don't even know these cards, huh? You, you like those other kind of cards. Okay, so that's number 20. Go to that book, sweetie. Let's show. This is number 20, and what we're doing, this is called judgment. Hmm. Wow. That would be certainly fall in if I'm trying to emulate you and I'm judging you and, and measuring to see whether you're doing a good job or not. That wouldn't work so well in a relationship. But so many people, unions, dissolve because they expect things from the other person. They want that individual to act a certain way, talk a certain way, be a certain way. You don't feel like that in your relationship, do you? Mm -mm. I mean, you're 16, honey, and so whatever your um, boyfriend does is perfectly all right. I mean, you're not expecting him, because we talked about last week, nobody can crave you like you do, right? Or no human. So he is just vibrating, and you're vibrating, and y'all come together and vibrate together. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's talk about number 20. Um, who needs it? Why? Who needs it? What are we going to talk about? Mitzi, what are we going to talk about back there, honey? Who needs it? Let's get that down. The question that comes to mind when the seeker pulls this card, we say thou does. Thou does. We need it. Mm -hmm. Jacob, you need it. I need it. Brenda, you need it. We need it. Sandy needs it. Okay. We need it. This is karma working on thy behalf. Karma, karma, it's karma. Now that's a, that's a strange term and a lot of people, um, you know, associate different meanings to it and some people just really misunderstand it. Uh, understand it. And basically when you boil it down to, if you want to put it in nuclear physics, again, I'm not going to do that. Um, for every action that you take, there's a reaction. If I go over there and flip that switch, we're going to be in the dark. Right. If I flip it back and the electricity's running and the bills have been paid, the light's going to come on. Okay? So if, I, if I'm hungry and I go eat a meal, I'm going to be temporarily filled. Mm -hmm. Well, that's life. Temporary. Everything's temporary. Go ahead, honey. Karma is an action for a reaction. Okay. Or a reaction for an action. Don't try to fight it. Don't try to fight it. Brandy, don't try to fight it. Enjoy what ye can do with it. And if you can't enjoy it, laugh at, at the very absurdity of it all. Okay. What Bridget is saying, and we were talking about um, relationships and not emulating and the number 20 and how that we can come alive. See already? Uh, we've barely been on the air, what, 10 minutes, and already we've started repeating the theme. A spontaneous, natural and convenient theme that we chose at random. I'm driving this point home. I'm driving it f because I love it. I have fun. And at any time that I didn't have fun, I'd quit. I'd walk. I'd get right up here and walk. I enjoy life. And that's what it's about. That's what it's saying. If you can't enjoy it, you better check your source or laugh at the, at the absurdity of the fact that you can't enjoy it. Don't rock the boat. All right. Be patient. Be still. And know that God is working in the midst of the air. Don't rock the boat. Be still. Be still, because I saw that, you yeah. know, I was talking about, um, don't rock the boat. All right, let's go. Uh, the perfection of thy own soul is to stake here and form all things involved. This is a favorable card telling thee there is nothing thou canst do about it in any way. Okay, it's a favorable card. Your particular situation is exactly and precisely as it's supposed to be for reasons you can't see. What did I say, Bridget? I have no idea. <laughs> I love it. And she's not a true Pisces. I love it. She doesn't have a clue. She's not supposed to. You are involved in a situation or with a person or with several people, whatever the case may be, for reasons that you can't see. For reasons, and you can ascribe, I seem to be using that word a lot. I'm going to see what the vibration is at in just a moment. But um, you can put anything you want to to a situation and say, this is what this means. But you don't have a clue, darling. 
you don't have a clue, you didn't have a clue yesterday and you won't have a clue tomorrow. And you will spend so much needless, pointless worry and effort and exhausted energy in trying to say what something means. You don't know. Yes, honey. So I confuse and confound thy mind with thoughts, hopes, aspirations, and complexities of which thou hast only scratched the surface. So why confuse and confine thy minds? Why? Why do you do it? Are you that bored? Really, are human beings that bored that they have to contrive and confuse and confound the situation instead of merely letting it be what it is? You know, we're sitting here um, in Raleigh, North Carolina, and a year ago, we were in Waynesville. Well, we were in Asheville doing the show, but we lived in Waynesville, in the mountains. And this year, completely different. You're going to a different school. You're surrounded by different friends, and um, everything has unfolded precisely and exactly as it was going to, but you didn't have a clue last year with your leg in the cast, did you? That this is where it would, you would be. You have no idea where you will be next year. None. But if you are in the moment and let it unfold, then your face won't wrinkle and your body won't age needlessly with so much worry and tension. Okay. Who needs Plus it? Plus you can enjoy sex the more. Question. I just want to throw that in. Because you can't you cannot carry to the bedroom a bunch of anxieties and, and all kinds of things that's held up in your mind. You know, you just can't do it, honey. And you're young and you're beautiful. And of course, sexual activity is something that you will get engaged, uh, engaged in and involved in. And I'm just telling you, sweetie, just be your beautiful, beautiful, natural, sensual self. And the whole world will work. Okay. Who needs it is indeed the question. Who needs it? We again tell you, thou does. Okay, who needs it? Who needs sexual expression? Who needs artistic expression? Who needs it? We do. We do. We're humans. We need it. We are here on this earth to create. That's what we're here to do. We're to indulge in pleasure and create. It's written in the scriptures, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful, be artistic and multiply. Duplicate yourself, not another. In no ways and in no manner should you judge anyone less than thee be 